All right, guys, welcome back to the Medium Cool Show. Today, we have a brand new episode. We're going to be talking about the 1972 horror splatter comedy film from the horror movie maverick legend, Herschel Gordon Lewis. And that film is The Gore Gore Girls. Never in the history of motion pictures have there been scenes such as these. We caution parents that no one under 17 will be admitted. The Gore Gore Girls. This was his last film that he made before taking a 30-year hiatus before he made his sequel to his breakout horror gore film, Blood Feast, which was released in 1962, I think. And then he made a sequel, Blood Feast 2, in 2003. Before that, The Gore Gore Girls was his last film in 1972. Mm-hmm. And Herschel Gordon-Lewis is considered uh, a very influential horror film director. He's, he's, he has the, he's earned the title The Godfather of Gore, mm-hmm. which he shares with Lucio Fulci. Really? Yeah, yeah, because Herschel Gordon Lewis was the first person to actually have gore, like where you show like the inside of the body, like the, the actual gore, the meat of the, the, of the body that was like outside of the body, like that kind of like red, gross, like meaty shit. And that was like first done in, in Blood Feast in mm-hmm. 1962. And then he was a part of the the gore boom. And he realized he, he was very much like a, a businessman, like kind of like a showman. Not necessarily a filmmaker, but he realized like the potential of making films and like distributing them into to, to, to drive through. So he would make, produce, write, direct his own films and then go to like drive-ins and like sell the movies to like drive-ins like all across the country and shit, you know, uh, like bootstrap sort of way, like indie, indie way, you know, yeah. like very influential. And yeah, he like invented gore effects and shit, but that's the intro. Yeah. But, um, the gore girl girls, what do you think of it? You know, I'm pretty new to Herschel Gordon Lewis and all these gore films in a way. So I kind of don't really have a baseline to really base my opinion off of, but I could tell it was pretty low budget. That's what I could tell yeah, you it was. Now. Yeah, it's really low budget. It's very cheap. It's very trashy, schlock, mm-hmm. sleazy shit that I, I, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I get that there's a cult following for it, but I don't know. Personally, I, I don't like the lack of, you know, filmmaking with intention, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like it's like the gore. Well, that is interesting. And I do think there is a lot of intention put into it. I think other parts of the film were very like lacking mm-hmm. and some of the performances were really, <laughs> really bad, like yeah. comically bad. Yeah. They're like non-actors, bro. Yeah. It's literally a bunch of non-actors. I mean, maybe the main guy who's the, the detective who's hired by a magazine to, to investigate the deaths of a, uh, of a striptease bar, which is already like yeah. so sleazy. And it's yeah. not even like, it's not even like they try to make it classy at all. It's just like straight up. The thing is, this movie is basically like a carnival. It's not, it, it's literally like, like we say with action years. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, let's get to the next action scene. With this, it's like, let's get to the next kill, the next, you know, gore scene. Because yeah. that's like the most exciting part of the movie and the most creative, fun part to watch because it's so ridiculous, like the kills in this movie. And it's also like, what I can appreciate about this film, it kind of has this through line, it's kind of like a giallo. It's like a guy, a person dressed in all black doing all these kills and they're, they're killing these, these women and you don't know who it is until it's revealed in the end. And I can appreciate that about it because at least it has like this sort of through line where some of those other pictures that we've watched, it's like no fucking plot. It's just straight up just like the kills Mm -hmm. and then a bunch of bullshit, like cheap bullshit, like cheap sound. And he did not waste one fucking frame of film while shooting this movie i'm pretty sure everything that he shot was in the edit of the 88 minute runtime which is really long for his stuff his his stuff is usually between like 60 70 minutes this one was 88 82 minutes wow but you can tell that he did not waste one frame because i think everything he shot was like what they needed and they're like oh let's 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 get this shot of you guys discussing okay cut let's move to the next scene like just Really, like, economical 
filmmaking, which I can appreciate. I'm, I'm, I'm very inspired by that. Mm -hmm. The fact that he just like did what he had to do and like sold his, his films and like it was like just good enough to, to do it. But he, he had that like business mindset of, oh, what do people want to see? They want to see the kills. They want to see the gore, you know, and then they have like a really light fucking cheesy story with like really schlocky acting, really schlocky camera work, really bad camera work, where it's just yeah. like they'll do like a pan and then it'll like be off center and then kind of go back <laughs> yeah. to some shit, you know? Yeah, but that, I mean, that is what bugs me. I will say the kills are really cool. They definitely made the film for me. They were yeah. the most enjoyable part. And I had never really seen something like it too, where, you know, normally in a giallo, it's creative ways of killing someone. Mm which I'm kind of used to in like Dario Argento kind of sense, but this is different because it's creative ways of just like absolutely destroying someone's face yeah. or something and just like taking out their eyeball and like putting it back yeah, in their yeah, skull yeah, and yeah. shit. And it's just like fucking messing it up and you're just like, oh shit, like that is really gross and really creative too. Um, I can definitely tell that he was like passionate about that, but in terms of the sleazy filmmaking and i was just like it's not it's not for me it's not that enjoyable yeah i hated i hated the main character dude yeah like, well he's... this is not a film that we can like you just like put on like oh let's watch this movie to hang out shit it's kind of like you have to have a sort of knowledge and appreciation in a way i think the first kill like the intro the first kill i thought was really dope where he's smashing the girl's face into the mirror mm -hmm. and shit that actually really got me into it. It was actually kind of well done. Like, it actually had, like, a mood atmosphere to it. And I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, this is, like, a little bit, like, next level for him. And then, but my favorite kill is the ass kill. Yeah, the mallet. Yeah, the ass, <laughs> the ass mallet kill. It was so fun. And then he, like, after he beats her, her ass, it's just, yeah. like, a bunch of, it looks like a marinara sauce. And then he starts <laughs> pouring, like, salt yeah. on it or some shit. Yeah, yeah that was, like. That yeah, was, like, she dies from it, too. I'm like, what the fuck? And then the next girl comes in. And it's the French fry boiling. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Psh, like yeah, it was face. the iron, and then the and then the the yeah the French the the fried thing. But one thing I want to mention about Herschel Gordon Lewis is that he literally created gore effects by himself. Like literally, just did it by himself independently, and then it was distributed to all these like drive-in theaters, and then like a lot of filmmakers coming up, like you know Wes Craven, fucking um, Toby Hooper. Like, there wouldn't be uh, his... Basically, they wouldn't be, like, these guys without Herschel Gordon-Lewis because Herschel Gordon-Lewis's film, not only did it, he did invent the horror effects, but he's, he created the genre of the hillbilly horror. Really? Because like, the his, Hills Have Eyes? And stuff? Yeah, Hills Have Eyes. He, he created... So he made this film called 2000 Maniacs where the, these group of, like, northerners go to the south and they enter into this, like, hillbilly town, like, this confederate town where they, like, make sacrifice... They, like kill people in a ritualistic way and it's like the you know that was like the first hillbilly horror movie mm -hmm. and they like p movies like hills of eyes texas chainsaw massacre like like fall after like fold suit after that deliverance shit. even yeah yeah all the hill but like all of that hmm. shit he created that genre interesting he was the first one to do it so he's very much a trailblazer like independent trailblazer which is like mm -hmm. something i can really appreciate you know mm -hmm. just like a guy doing it like on his own yeah and he was really inspired, like, he really inspired John Waters and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like, that sort of, he, he made cheesy, schlocky trash and aesthetic mm -hmm. that was, like, brought over to, like, John Waters films and shit, you know? Yeah, I definitely see that. And I definitely can see the appreciation for him. Like, Psycho and Blood Feast are, like, two of the most influential horror films of all time. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I have yeah. to watch Blood Feast next, then. Yeah, I mean, you, you won't like it either, but whatever but i still have to watch it you know yeah if you want to yeah i do have a, like an appreciation for this so like yeah. do you think it's worth do you think it's worth like giving it a shot at least yeah but you know? it's like we're watching it like when jake and i watch these movies we're kind of watching it in an ironic way yeah you know like it's so bad that it's good mm -hmm. you know yeah which i'm i'm fine with yeah i'm making behind that you yeah know? but i'm not going to pretend that I'm there for any of the story or anything like no, that. No, we're not. Yeah, yeah, we're not. It's just like the lack of story is like fun for us Yeah. in a way. Like you can't go into this thinking like you can't just like watch it. Like you gotta, you can't like watch it for the story or being entertained or whatever. You're not, it's, it's, it's you're going to be kind of bored, mm -hmm. but it's just fun to watch how bad it is Yeah. in a way. 
Yeah. But also have an appreciation and also seeing, you can see every setup he does and every edit he does, <laughs> yeah. you know, like that's yeah. what's so, you can actually see the approach and then I kind of want to like, I think about like, oh, how could you apply that? Like you can literally just, he's like literally just did it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? He just like did it. Like, that's what's so cool. Yeah. It's like a Chris movie. You know? Yeah. Except Chris does like a million takes from a million different angles. Yeah, Whereas Herschel Gordon Lewis was like, oh, put the camera on a tripod, shoot the scene all the way through, whatever. We'll get some inserts and then we'll be done. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and there's just one scene, though, that I want to mention where the reporter and the detective are like in a room and then they notice a dead body and then it fades to black. But then it fades out and you can see it's like the same angle, but there's a bunch of detectives yeah. in the room because it's like time passed because they called the cops. But you know that they were just like, okay, guys, just put the put the towel over the body and let's put get the, all the policemen in here. Yeah, let's get the extras in yeah, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they <laughs> just like move cut the them. camera. Yeah, no, they just like didn't move the camera, just like shot it. And that was really interesting about the approach. I think like if you're a filmmaker, like if you're trying to make films independently, like I definitely think you should check this out because I think there are kind of inspiring in a way because you you literally could just make a movie with like you know you can just make a movie no matter what you know like mm-hmm. there's no excuse yeah because herschel gordon lewis did that shit bro yeah that's true that's yeah. that is inspiring in a way yeah so yeah. yeah herschel gordon lewis i've seen like five of his movies now uh i've seen i think i've seen all the main gore violent ones but yeah guys have you seen herschel gordon lewis uh probably not but you know if you're a real deep film horror guy you probably have heard of him uh yeah 